All right, so back on the 70 Fastback. Um, I jumped into it here to get everything lined up with the rockers where I left off to make sure everything's in place so I can start doing the cal and firewall area. So I'll just show you where I'm at with that. Uh, there's a little bit going on just to make sure that everything's in the right location where it needs to be. I actually ratchet strap the car down to the table to hold it tight down on my stands um, so that while I'm welding it, it won't twist or tweak um, and it gets welded in the place that it's supposed to be. So I'll leave those ratchet straps on while I'm welding together a good bit here, especially the counter firewall area uh, until I'm done with that and know that everything's strong in those areas. So um, just to give you an example of what things maybe I'm measuring off of here through this process of setting up the rockers. Um, taking measurements off of the old car uh, in, in things like the end of this A pillar to where you can see I have marks on where the curve, where the fender is going to meet that rocker, the distance between there or the distance between that notch and the end of the inner rocker lip um, or off of the old A pillar um, side panel here to that same mark on your old one so that when you put this new rocker in, you'll line up that piece because that's one of your major location points along with the back corner, which is not necessarily as as important as this front one because the back one, a lot of times I've had to alter whether that's making it curve in more or out a little bit um, because when it meets up with the reproduction core panel, sometimes they're a little bit off um, which is, that's just the reproduction parts of what's to be expected. So I lined all that up, measured it, welded the rocker to the inner rocker, um, both sides. And you can see here in the front, actually, I put my spreader tool in between the tops of the inner rockers, um, cause they were leaning in a little bit. So I pushed it out to where it's supposed to be. I actually go a little bit past and then welded it so that when I take that out, because it's going to shrink back in a little bit whenever you take that tension off of it, that pressure off. So I go a little bit past to account for that. Um, welded the A pillars on to the rockers, so everything's in place there. The B pillars, I actually welded the inner part of the B pillar, because uh, if you watched the last video, I explained I'm getting rid of the B pillars because they're rusted up through in many spots. So they're going to get changed to so no use of welding those in place. Um, and the only thing I didn't weld is this outer cow side panel here. I didn't weld this because you can see how this is dented from where it was hit before. Um, when I take out the inner cow side panel, I'll be able to access the back of this and I'll be able to hit that and beat it back into location instead of changing that because that panel's pretty nice. It's not rusted anywhere. So I'd like to save that because the other side's nice as well. So I'll be able to hit them out. Um, so floor pans welded into the rockers, to the pillars. So the next things I'm going to do, I'm going to take out my spreader tool because I'm going to be working in there. I'll probably cut out some of the firewall on the side so I can access that cow side panel on the inside, um, or I'll take out the whole firewall. I'm not sure yet, but I'll figure it out as I go. Um, and then I'm going to do the inner cow side panels on both sides. And it, it's kind of a, as you go, you know, <laughs> uh, to get a feel of what you're going to change. But in my head, inner cow side panels, I'll probably set a new firewall in place and then I'll go up to the lower cow, upper cow, and then this whole box area will be together. So I'm going to start there, inner cow side panels, cut them out, put them in. So that's what I'm doing next.
So what I ended up doing after all is I just cut everything out. Um, that was just the easiest way to do it for me. Um, it might be a little bit much, especially if this is your first time and you're going this deep into it. Um, but just knowing measurements, like I keep explaining all the time, measurements, measurements, just even like say from the corner of this to somewhere up there on the windshield post that's not gonna move, I use the pins for where your, uh, your window molding clips would go. I measured off of that out to different areas of the cow and, and all kinds of things, heights off of my floor up to corners and the center of the cow, cross measurements, so I know where everything's gonna be whenever it goes back. Um, it took a hammer and dolly, bashed that cow side panel out, um, so it looks pretty good now. Ripped out the in inner cow side panels, um, used a ripper wheel to clean up all the metal in there that was exposed now, and coated it with, uh, I use Eastwood Rust Encapsulator, uh, that's a pretty good paint to spray on. So coated the inside of both of those. I went ahead and prepped my panels. I held them up in place and anywhere where I was gonna weld, I prepped it or put holes to weld. So now what I'm gonna do is um, to help line everything up because these can move a little bit by hand. Um, they have a little bit of flex to them, but even with the car this far apart, I mean, I could move the pillar here and it just barely even has a variation to it um, and I, like I said I have measurements of where everything's supposed to be so it's just more scary of a thought than it actually is when you're cutting into it so I'm gonna put those inner cow side panels in place clamp them with vice grips and then I'm also gonna put the firewall which is sitting over there I gotta prep that I'll clamp that in place so I have that whole structure all together, knowing that it fits in measurement. I'm gonna measure everything, make sure that that's all good before I weld those three pieces in. And then after that, I'll go to the upper cow. So let's clamp everything in place and start welding.
I went ahead and prepped and coated my upper cow panel. Um, you can see, well, I put holes where I'm going to weld and then coated the bottom side of it because you'll never be able to paint that once it's on. And also coated the top side of this lower cow. And in between coats, I sealed that top hat, which you saw in the video. And then just over top of the welds that I did and ground down on the sides there because your water is going to come down. Um, and if you don't seal them off, the water will sit into there if they're grooved a little bit. Um, it'll go through pinholes and we'll start rusting that out so that way the water will run right off that. Which doesn't make sense anyway because water's just going to go down in there and rust out that eventually. A long, long time from now um, for this car and probably won't ever because this car probably won't see rain in its lifetime. But those are coated. So now I'm, the only thing I'm going to do for the rest of the day to end my day out is put the upper cow on top, measure it out, clamp it down, weld it in place, um, and then my whole cow firewall area is done and complete. Um, and just to give you a little context on, because some people might be wondering, well, how long did that take you? This is, this was, what you see in this video was done today. Um, and then including filming in between and stuff like that. Um, but for me, I've done so, I've done it so many times that I can just blow right through it. Um, so for you, it, it might take a little while or just take your time, don't rush through it because this stuff is really critical and making sure that you get your stuff located to where it's supposed to be. So take your time when you're doing this stuff. Um, don't get discouraged watching my videos in that sense that it just flies together. So gonna put that cow panel in place and weld it in and that's gonna be it for this video.